Let's talk about Russian-Ukraine war. Uh, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, has signaled NATO that there is a serious danger of being drawn further into the Ukraine war if its members continue to supply military weaponry to Ukraine. President Putin gave the warning at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum on Friday. He says the supplies of heavy military weaponry to Ukraine are ongoing and NATO is not looking into giving Ukraine the jets. The country or the comments appear to be a reference to the F-16 fighter jets that members of the NATO alliance are making plans to supply Ukraine with. NATO or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was formed in the aftermath of World War II to defend Western nations from the Soviet Union and the alliance contains a mutual defense clause where an attack on any one member is considered an attack on all. Let's talk this through by speaking with an international affairs analyst, Yuria Franchelli, who is joining me from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us, um, Yuria. Uh, could you elaborate on Putin's comment about the transfer of uh, tactical nuclear warheads being about containment and a reminder to potential aggressors? What message is Russia trying to convey through this action? Hello, uh, Ibrahim. Thank you for the invitation. It's nice to be here again. Well, it's actually something that was planned uh, right when this war started. Uh, if we think about the history of everything that happened so far, uh, Belarus, for example, it had a, uh, on its constitution that it was not allowed to host any sort of nuclear weapons in its territory. And what happened last year, only three days after the Russian invasion in Ukraine, um, uh, President Lukashenko decided to host to, uh, to hold a referendum to change the constitution so he would allow the uh, nuclear weapons in this territory. So they knew, President Putin, Lukashenko, they knew that it was something that at some points they wanted to do. It was a tool that they that they wanted to have just in case this uh, help from the Western countries continued. Uh, and then in March this year, when, uh, they, when the UK decided to send uranium, to deplete uranium to Ukraine, it's, it's a material that is used, it's not, uh, it's not used to make nuclear weapons, for example, but it's used to, because it has the, the, the power to perforate armored vehicles. Uh, Russia didn't like that. And then that's the first time that Putin said they were going to uh, send nuclear weapons to Belarus. But as I, as I already said, it was, it was already something that they, they intended to do since the beginning of the war. They were just waiting for the pretext to do that. And mm -hmm. then that's what happened this year. Lukashenko said on Wednesday that uh, Belarus already started receiving these nuclear weapons, which are not the same as the strategic weapons, uh, the tactical weapons. They are more targeted weapons. They have they, they are weapons that can be used only in the, the battlefield. But it doesn't mean that they're not as powerful. If we look at the, the nuclear bomb that was thrown in Hiroshima many decades ago, mm. it, it had about 15 kilotons. And the, the tactical nuclear weapons that are in Belarus, they are between, they can go from one kiloton up to 200 kilotons. So they're very powerful and they're trying to scare the West from, uh, they want the West to stop providing weapons uh, to Ukraine. Right. So in the past, uh, Russia has stated that it would only use nuclear weapons if its territory or states were threatened. But does the presence of these nuclear weapons in Belarus change the strategic balance in the region? I mean, how does it impact Ukraine's defensive capabilities? Well, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't come as a surprise because NATO, uh, the European Union, they already knew that this could happen. They knew this could happen since Belarus changed its constitution last year. But it, it changes uh, the nuclear threat everywhere in the world, because it's the first time since the end of the Soviet Union that Russia sends nuclear weapons uh, outside its territory. Uh, if we think about 
the, the border that Belarus has with the European Union. It's mm. more than 1,200 kilometers. Uh, and with, the, with Ukraine, it's more than 1,000 kilometers. It's actually 1,084 kilometers. So Russia can send, they, they can fire these weapons much quicker now, uh, which gives Ukraine, gives the NATO countries, give, gives the European Union less time to, to defend themselves. But again, it's not something that uh, is likely to happen. Mm. It's, it's just another escalation, but it's more like sending a message than we're, we're not, again, uh, on the edge of a nuclear war. We're closer to that, but we're not on the, <laughs> on the edge right. yet. Right, right. So uh, looking at uh, you know, the, the Russian leader who is due to meet African leaders in St. Petersburg after they uh, you know, visited Kiev on Friday as part of a peace initiative they are representing or they are presenting it to both countries. However, while they were in city, it, it came under Russian missile attack. How do you, do you think the international community responded to the Russian missile attack on the city and then where the African leaders were visiting? Has there been any condemnation of for, or, or further diplomatic action to this? Um. I think about when you talk about the visits of the the seven nations, uh, the African nations that are that visited Kiev, and then now we're heading to to Russia. I think it's a very praiseable um, movement because that's what the countries that are not involved in this conflict. And when I say the countries that are not involved with this, I mean mostly the African countries and the Latin American countries, because even the the uh, Asian countries that call themselves neutral, like India, like China, they are all getting something out of this. India has been buying cheaper fuel and China has been doing the same thing, buying cheaper gas and fuel from, from Russia. But when we talk about really neutral countries, that's what we talk about. Uh, the African countries, the Latin American countries, the, some of the proposal, pro, the proposal of the uh, African countries, they're actually very good. They talk about the pulling back of the Russian troops, the removal of tactical nuclear weapons from uh, Belarus, the suspension, and, and then that's like to, to make it more balanced, the, uh, the conflict. But yeah. there are also some things that lean more, some, some demands that lean more towards mm. the Russian side. But again, they're trying to balance as much as they can, like the suspension of the uh, International Criminal Court uh, arrest warrant against uh, Putin. Putin. So yeah. I think it's actually a very good proposal. It's much better than the one that uh, my, my own president is trying to propose, which is uh, President Lula, that he just says he wants everyone to sit down and have a conversation, try yeah. to solve something out, but th he's not saying what. So it's, it's actually very good. It's a good movement. And uh, the African nations are trying uh, mm. more than anything to get a, the unconditional absolutely, grain fertilizer deal right. for, for the food uh, imports. Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, thank you very kindly. Uh, an international affairs analyst, Uria Francelli. Uh, thank you so much for joining us from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Thank you so much for your keenness of insight on this. Thank you. Thank you, Ibrahim.